Hi everyone, this is a really quick webcast on fonts. It just won't take much time at all. We have mentioned fonts so many times in our webcast that there isn't much more I need to say, but I do need to visit this topic tonight. So this is uh, InDesign 1, Week 5, Webcast 5. We have talked about the differences between OpenType, TrueType, and Type 1 fonts. We have mentioned how we change a font in an InDesign file, though we're going to get into far more detail on that a little bit later. But what I want to talk about right now is fonts and how they interact with your operating system. Just because you have a font on your hard drive, it doesn't mean that it's necessarily installed on your system. And on the Macintosh, it gets even more complicated because you can have different levels of access to fonts. You can say that this font is only accessible by the administrator of the account uh, or a particular user. So what I want to key in on here are just certain words that you're going to want to look at in order to figure out how to put fonts on your system. I'm also going to attach links to the blog which will um, help anybody who's trying to load fonts on any particular operating system. I was going to do a video of each one. I know the previous instructor did that, but we've got so many varying operating systems that I want to be sure that you're getting the instructions that are exactly right for your flavor of the operating system. For example, OS 10 across the board is going to probably just be dealing with font books. There aren't going to be too many differences with that. If you go back to OS 9, you're dealing with a slightly different animal and you'll want to definitely look up the instructions for that. XP on Windows is only slightly different than uh, Windows 7 and 8, which are almost exactly the same when you're installing a font. And again, the keyword on the Windows machine is going to be Control Panel. So on a Windows machine, you're going to want to go to your Control Panel and you're going to want to go to that Fonts folder, which can be under the Panels, Appearance, and Personalization option, or if you use the um, traditional small folder type, you're just going to go directly to that Fonts panel. And again, I will have instructions on the blog that you can click on to get your exact flavor. On the Mac, just think the words Font Book, which is an app which you can find in your App folder. And if you have any particular difference in your operating system, all you have to do is go to your online help system on your Macintosh and look up the words font book. But again, I will also have instructions for OS 10 on the blog. Um, getting back to storing your fonts versus installing your fonts. I make it a practice that whenever I acquire a font, I place a copy of that font somewhere in my hard drive. And I have under my company folder, I have a fonts folder. And I have lots and lots of fonts in there. But not all of these fonts are loaded on my system. Every once in a while, I clean out a font that I know I won't use anymore. It's an old true type font. Um, and I'm constantly adding new fonts depending on what fonts my clients are requiring me to use. In InDesign, it just and this is going to be true for the Macintosh as well as Windows, when we talk about installing fonts, sometimes fonts are installed automatically for us. For example, system fonts are installed when you install your operating system. So on a Macintosh, this is already taken care of when you buy the computer, and in most cases on a Windows machine as well. And if I take a look at my fonts list here, some of the fonts that we'll recognize as fonts that are loaded on install is Arial is usually one of those. Um, go down to uh, my favorite email font is Calibri. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it. But you'll recognize some of these fonts. And most of these are true type fonts, though many of them are being converted to open type, but they don't have a whole lot of variety in them. For example, if I choose Calibri here, uh, I only have the choice between, well actually in this particular open type I have a little bit more than usual, but sometimes you'll find some of these free fonts that come with your system are used by the operating system and may only have regular and that may be it, or regular and bold, 
and at the most regular italic, bold, and bold italic. That's kind of your basic four that most minimum fonts have, unless it's a decorative font that's been loaded on your system. So for example, let me see if I can find one here uh, that's not a purchase. Let's say um, French script. What do I have here? So for French script, all I have available to me is the regular style. There is no any alternative to that. Now when you purchase an application, sometimes that application, when you install that application on your system, it loads fonts in the background. And that's the case with InDesign. You have access to certain fonts when you load the application. And sometimes if you send in your registration card, you are allowed to get more fonts for free. And you'll see how great that is after we talk a little bit more about font boundaries. You know, an active font will be available if it's a truly active font on your system, it's been installed on your system, that will be available to all applications at any time. And we talked about this in the previous webcast, the difference between that and the packaged font, which has a LST file, which means that if you're using that InDesign document and the file structure is set up the way the packaging does it, you will have access to those fonts for that one file. And on the Mac, as I said, we have a sliding scale of who has access to what font. But usually when I load fonts to my Mac, I put it under all users so that it's, a, it's available to any application and any user. And these are things you're going to want to look at on the Macintosh when you're loading fonts. If you are a fontaholic and you just love having tons of fonts, you might want to consider getting a font management utility system, something like um, suitcase or something like that. I used to use those when my systems didn't have as much RAM as they have today. I have not used them in a very long time. So this is something that you might want to go blogging and get people's opinions on about whether you, they think it's necessary. I have several hundred fonts loaded and so far I've been doing okay. Let's talk a moment about free fonts. I've got a couple websites up here I want us to take a quick look at. Um, let's go first to Defont. This is a website that you can purchase fonts. They also have some free fonts. I know this was one of Cindy's, the previous instructor's favorite sites. And you can go into categories, or you could go directly to a particular font by doing a search. Notice that this website has how to install a font instructions, which you're going to find pretty consistently across the board. Every font foundry that is selling fonts online will usually have a section that talks about installing fonts. And notice that we've got 8, 7, and Vista are very similar. XP is slightly different. And then we've got OS X. And it even has a link for o other OS operating systems. And it goes into a little bit more detail about what's no longer supported or what is supported. So you just go to a particular um, style that you're looking for. Let's say I'm looking for something that's in the area of calligraphy. I click on that. And as I scroll down, I can see that I get a sample of any font that I can purchase on this site. Some of these are free. I can just download them. And where you're going to find this information is over here on the side. I, I actually, I think I believe I downloaded Chopin script. And this is a free font, which means that I can use it wherever and whenever I want. And they're just asking that you donate to the author. Some fonts, for instance, Living Together here, this is free for personal use. So I can download this, and if I want to use it for personal use, it's fine. But I can't use it for corporate use. That's where the copyright is a little bit different. And then, of course, any font that you are purchasing, um, I'm going to switch over to another font area. Here's another website called Veer, V-E-E-R. And let's see if I go into my Browse by Style button. You can see that they're giving you all these categories that you can choose from. And maybe I'll click on traditional. And 
and I happen to know that uh, Minion Standard is an Adobe font, so it's being sold on Beard.com. And go to the details on that. This is just one part of the Minion family. This is standard black. It's just a single font. And that's $29 for just that face. You can purchase this normally in a package, which is going to cost a lot more. And for that, I'm going to jump over here to the um, let me just jump over here to the Adobe type foundry. So this is the Adobe website. These are their font. And I'm going to I was going to use Arno Pro as an example, but let me look at Minion just so we can kind of relate that. And I'm looking for no no no, that's not what I wanted to do. But now that we mention it, you are allowed to type in a string of text to view how that font looks with those letters. I just typed it in the wrong spot. But you can see how now every sample says Minion. Not really what I had in mind. I typed it in the wrong location on the screen. Okay. So here are all of these Minion faces. And if I click on Minion Pro, I can see that the Minion Pro line has all of these faces. And if I buy them individually, they cost $35 a piece. And if I buy the entire package, it costs $199. And I just went through this with a client. They wanted a particular font. And they only wanted a couple of the faces. So we went back and forth about what was going to be the better deal. Should we get the entire package? Or should we just buy them individually? So think about that, $199 and you get Minion Pro free with InDesign. When you purchase InDesign, you get Myriad, Minion, and several others. So right there you're talking about hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of fonts. And I just wanted you to realize that just to appreciate what you're getting with that. And Minion and Myriad, M-Y-R-I-A-D, is a serif and a sans serif version of a modern font that was designed to look good in print and on screen. I've mentioned this in previous webcasts. So I'm sure Myriad is very similar to this. So right there between the two of them is almost $400 in font. Something to consider. So when you pay for a font like this, you are going to never have problems embedding that font in a PDF, getting it to package properly, because a lot of time has been spent designing this font. Kerning pairs have been perfected. Um, and we're going to talk more about kerning pairs as we move into getting into our text frames next week. Where a free font, though maybe a fun font for Halloween party or some other little special occasion, it's not going to have the time spent designing all of those features that are very um, important to the functionality of the font. And I want to just warn you, be very careful when you get an offer for free font from some website that has ads flashing everywhere because I clicked on some of those and all of a sudden my um, malware alerts go on that something has been attached to that site. So you may not always get good quality. You may have problems with installation, with embedding. You're not going to have those features like kerning, font pairs and such that are indicative of a quality font. And I'm not saying not to use those fonts because I use them, but I just am very cautious when I download them and I'm, and I'm cautious about what I'm going to do with that font in my project. Another suggestion I would like to make is to try to go with OpenType whenever you can. Because right off the bat you're able to use that font as we can see right here. This font is OpenType, which means that it will work on both Windows and Macintosh platforms which is really nice since I do not want to have to purchase this font for both of them, which is what I used to have to do when we did not have OpenType. For every font that I needed to use in my Macintosh, I had to purchase the exact same family on my Windows machine. 
Okay, so in review here, remember that just because you're storing a font on your hard drive or on a server does not mean that that font is loaded on your system. And if you'll think back on the previous webcast with packaging, this is why packaging is so important because it's going to give whoever you give that InDesign file to access to the fonts that are needed to edit that InDesign file properly. You can always edit the text, you just won't be able to see how it's really going to look unless those fonts are available. Check the blog for any special instructions about how to load fonts on your particular operating system. If you guys are you familiar with that, that's wonderful. You can just skip that. Um, there's not going to be any kind of a homework assignment with that. Um, I just don't think that's something I want to do to make you go up and pick out a font and download it and then install it. When you need a font, you know where you can go look to get that reference material to do it properly. Okay, that's it for fonts. Like I said, it's a very short webcast. And until the next one, signing off.